Hello everyone. This video is about cloud forms as a management engine for container management environments such as OpenShift or Atomic Enterprise Platform. OpenShift Enterprise shifts with cloud forms as its management engine. And in that context, let's look at how we can use uh, cloud forms as a container management tool. Cloud forms as a tool does a lot of things other than managing OpenShift, but for this discussion in this video, we are just going to focus on the container management. So all the tabs that you're seeing here are the other features that CloudForm provides, but we'll just focus on the containers part. What you're seeing here is an overview page under containers, and it shows that there are two OpenShift environments that are being managed by this CloudForms setup, and there is one atomic enterprise platform that is being managed as well. This cloud forms can also manage a Kubernetes cluster as well. So we are talking about three clusters being managed by, or three providers being managed by this environment. It also gives a summary of how many nodes are there, how many pods, how many containers, services, and things like that. Now moving on, if I click on this providers link, it takes me to this providers tab, and you see those three different provider environments that I have here. So uh, let me put it in the list view. There is a atomic enterprise platform and the URL is here. There is a, uh, there are two different OpenShift environments as well, right? Now I can add additional environments by clicking on add new containers provider and it gives me options to uh, add additional providers if I have to. So I can give a name, I can choose what type it is, whether it is Atomic Enterprise or OpenShift, or and then I can uh, provide a token that I set up in the OpenShift environment. And once I give the token, the cluster gets added for this CloudForms environment to manage. I can also look at all the projects across all these environments, right? That it shows everything here, but I can uh, go drill down into each provider, for example, and uh, I can see all the projects. There are 14 projects uh, under this demo v3 provider, right? I have 14 projects, 16 routes, the number of services, replication controllers, pods, the number of containers, nodes, image registries, images, and all that, right? It gives me a summary of all the things that are running here. And every, everything here is clickable. So if I click on this project, it shows me a list of all the projects in this environment. If I uh, go back and click on the routes, it shows me all the application routes that are available. So I can look at each route, for example, by getting into the details. And it gives me what is the host name by use, using which I can access this route. Now there is also a monitoring feature here. So if I click on this guy, it shows me the time based on timelines. It pulls up all the events. This will take a couple of seconds. So uh, all the events are now pulled up and I can click on any event and see what, what happened during that time on the timeline. So for example, this one says that it created a, a container with so-and-so Docker ID. And this one talks about the pod scheduling event. It says that so-and-so pod got, so-and-so build got started in a pod. So you can monitor all the management events. You can change the frequency, the interval, as well as how many days back you want to go to kind of stuff here. Now I can also look at the list of nodes. You can see that this cluster has four nodes and one master that is also acting as a node, right? And then I can drill down into each and every individual node, look at what the footprint of the node is and now I can also see what routes, what services, what replication controllers and pods are running on that particular node. So if I click on these pods, it shows me that there are these X number of pods running on that particular node, which is node one, right? So you can drill down from a bunch of clusters to a single cluster, and then from single cluster to each node to see what is going on on each box. So it's going back. So now back to the cluster, there is another thing that it's pretty useful. This is a topology view. When I click on the topology view, it shows that there is an OpenShift cluster and all the things that are running in that cluster. So for example, uh, looking at the labels here, which explain what these symbols mean, the these things are nodes, right? So it shows there are one, two, three, four, five nodes here. 
and then there are routes, services, containers, pods, and replicators, each one shown with their own symbol. Now, things of interest here. You can see when I hover over this guy, this particular pod has failed, and it is shown with a red circle showing that test failed, whereas the other pods are actually running, right? And there are some that are, for example, this container is gray, and it shows that the status is terminated. It's it's done with its job, right? So that's that's how you can look at the topology view and decipher some information of your interest. Now, another way of using this is, uh, let's say I disable everything by clicking on these symbols, right? And now there is an OpenShift cluster. If I just want to see all the nodes that are on this cluster, I just click on the nodes. Now I see that there are five nodes here. I can display the names and it shows the names of each of these nodes. And then let's say I, I want to see all the containers that are running on these nodes. Now the containers come up, but let me take off the names here. The containers come up, but they are not, although they are running on the nodes, they are not seen as, a, as connected to the nodes, right? Now let's enable the pods. Now you see that the containers are running in the context of a pod on a particular node. So for example, this particular pod has two containers running in it, right? When I hover over it, it is a logging pod and it has a Kibana container running and it has another Kibana proxy. Two containers, two Docker containers are running inside this pod, right? It's pretty useful. You can enable and disable whatever you want to see and what you don't want to see. Same thing for the entire set of clusters that are being managed by the CloudForms engine can be seen in the topology view on the top level, right? So if I click on the topology at the top level, now I am seeing multiple OpenShift clusters here. This is one, this is another, and there should be a uh, atomic enterprise platform circle somewhere, right? So there are, so if I disable all these guys again, with the ease of it, now I'll start seeing the so there are three different environments that I'm managing. This guy has eight nodes, this guy has five nodes, and this guy doesn't have any nodes, right? That's, that's how I can use this topology view, and I can see the things that I'm interested in. Now I'm back again to the cluster summary. Another thing, there are it shows that there are there is one image registry here. This is the internal registry on, on running on OpenShift. Let's click on that to see what, what's in there. Here it shows the IP address of that registry. This is the OpenShift generated service IP for the registry. Now let's see what images are there in this registry. It says that there are 10 images in this registry and uh, there are 13 containers. So let's look at what those images are and it gives the list of images, right? And their Docker IDs as well. What I can do is, for example, select one of this image and get into additional details of what's the full, full name of this image the Docker ID of this image. And I want to also initiate something called a smart state analysis to look at all the uh, packages that are inside this image. So for example, once I have this image selected, I can go to configuration and say, I want to perform smart state analysis. This will schedule a job. It will take some time to collect all the packages. So once the smart state analysis is done, it will have this configuration information with all the packages that are part of this image listed here. So I can click on this guy at that point of time and look at all the details of, of, of all, all the packages that are involved in that image. So that was a quick uh, overview of how CloudForms management engine can be used for managing OpenShift or any other container management environment like Atomic Enterprise Platform or, or a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching.